So welcome to our revision towards 2023 Learning School of Law and mission. We would like to look at uh, one question in constitutional law. Uh, I think it's an adaptation of a, a question which was uh, previously given to those who have written this exam before. So let us uh, look at it in a minute. The question is this, uh, in Ray Jackson against Attorney General, uh, Lord Stern said that, quote, the supremacy of parliament is still the general principle of our constitution. It is a construct of the common law, unquote. Does this observation by Lord Stern apply to our parliament in Ghana? fully explain your answer. Yeah, so this is a, a very straightforward question. It's also testing our knowledge in some of the uh, elementary or some of the basic things in constitutional law. And if you look at the past question, not exactly the same question, but a, a question which has a similar substance as uh, what I have uh, formulated for our discussion uh, tonight, uh, was given to uh, students. Uh, so uh, clearly, uh, as we have uh, indicated, and the question is asked, an essay question, uh, you, you should uh, endeavor to understand exactly what the question is testing. So this question uh, simply want us to answer the question, whether the concept of supremacy of parliament applies to Ghana. The concept of supremacy of parliament, does it apply to Ghana? That is the, the essence of the question. And we should be able to answer it in the affirmative or the negative, yes or no, and provide an explanation for the answer that you have given. So if we say, if we answer it in the affirmative as yes, we must adduce uh, cogent uh, reasons to buttress our answer. On the other hand, if you answer uh, a no, you must uh, canvas reasons to uh, support your answer. So as we always say, you have to definitely give an uh, introduction. And in the introduction, some of the ideas uh, which may go into it include uh, an a brief explanation of constitution, right? You must briefly explain constitution. And as uh, we know from our constitutional law uh, 101, uh, so to speak, the constitution refers to the set of uh, rules and arrangements uh, for the governance of uh, a polity of a country. So it is the, 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 the arrangement, the understanding, uh, the convictions, uh, which uh, see to how a particular uh, country is governed, how the governance uh, apparatus, the architecture of the governance is actually laid out. That is what uh, the constitution is about. And that is why uh, we've noted in previous session that the constitution uh, will be explained by some uh, 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 scholars to be the basic law of the country. Good. So therefore, the constitution may be written as in Ghana's constitution, in which uh, the various arrangements and uh, principles, convictions uh, that uh, relate to governance of the country called Ghana actually embodied in one one document, which we call like the, the 1992 constitution, so it's in one tablet, so to speak. On the other hand, a constitution may also be unwritten, uh, where you don't have like a, a single document in which the arrangements and principles for governance of uh, the particular country are actually enshrined, but it may be scattered uh, in some scattered legislation, some traditions and practices 
conventions as uh, pertains in the United uh, Kingdom. Yeah, so uh, these ideas need to be briefly be explained, but not in the too detail. Now, then you come to uh, the, 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 the heart of the question. You need to explain supremacy of parliament. So uh, within uh, constitutional law, the concept of supremacy of parliament is usually associated with the, the, you know, the British uh, you know, parliament, where there's this uh, you know, understanding at common law. I mean, and I understand which crystal light way back uh, from the very uh, common law uh, stages, early development of common law, that parliament is supreme. And for that matter, parliament can do anything except to change uh, a male into a female and vice versa. And that uh, you know, is an explanation or that is a, a depiction of how parliament is powerful in, in Britain. When it comes to lawmaking, when it comes to oversight and all that a parliament is supposed to do as a, a forum for representative of the people, in relation to governance, parliament can do uh, virtually uh, anything it deems fit. So that is the, the essence of the supremacy of parliament. And as I said, uh, it's an idea which applies to the United Kingdom. That is the idea which applies to the United Kingdom. And that is why in the R. N. Jackson against Attorney General, uh, Lostan will remind us that uh, despite the fact that we've had the Human Rights Act, we've had even what we call the Acts of Parliament Act and so on and so forth, the basic point remains that uh, Parliament is supreme. And that is why I say that the supremacy of Parliament is still the general principle of our constitution, referring to the constitution of Britain. And he makes a point that this doctrine is a construct or a creature of the common law. So that is the situation as far as United Kingdom is concerned. However, the point needs to be made that supremacy of the constitution in Ghana, uh, as we know from articles one and two of the constitution, does not permit supremacy of parliament. Because we know that if you look at article one of the constitution, we are told that the sovereignty resides in the people of Ghana and for whose uh, welfare and benefit uh, the powers and norms uh, created in this constitution are supposed to be what exercised, and so on and so forth. And then Article 2 also reminds us that uh, anything which is inconsistent, which is in contravention with the letter and the spirit of the constitution, so the, to the extent of that uh, inconsistency to be declared uh, null and void as it were. So that endorses the doctrine of supremacy of constitution. And because Ghana practices the supremacy of the constitution, automatically there is no uh, place for what we call supremacy of parliament. Parliament is not supreme to the constitution. And again, uh, when it comes to supremacy of the, the constitution I mean, of, of parliament too, uh, if you go to, let's say, United Kingdom, another uh, dimension of that concept is that parliament is superior to the executives. And that is why uh, you know, the MPs, we can say that they can enact any law and so on and so forth, as it were. But if you come to uh, a Ghana, because of the supremacy of the constitution, all the arms of government, the executive, the legislature, the judiciary, they are more or less uh, at par. So that is uh, another point that we have to uh, keep in mind. The only thing which uh, sits above all is the constitution. And so and a plethora of authorities, uh, which we know by now. We know uh, the case of uh, um, Tupou versus Attorney General, the 31 December case, the Luther case, uh, and all the recent, uh, you know, in, um, we can get over uh, 100 cases uh, to support the principle of supremacy of the constitution. And in fact, 
almost uh, every case that has gone to the Supreme Court re relating to the Constitution is a case which illustrates supremacy of the Constitution. So any of those cases that you remember, if you cite it in support, you will not be wrong. So let us keep that uh, in mind. And again, we also have to cite examples from the Constitution to illustrate the point that when it comes to legislative power of parliament, parliament does not have untrammel power. Parliament is limited. Despite the fact that if you look at the Constitution, uh, the power to make law is conferred on parliament, that power is not unlimited. And in fact, uh, if you look at Article 12 of the Constitution, which is the part of Chapter 5, the fundamental you know, human rights and freedoms, the point is made there by the framers of the Constitution that all organs of government and various uh, institutions and agencies of state and even natural persons are supposed to uh, be guided by the fundamental human rights and freedoms which have been enshrined in the Chapter 5 of the Constitution. So what that means is that Parliament cannot uh, make a law uh, in violation of uh, these uh, fundamental human rights and freedoms, so to speak. So that is one substantive uh, example. And again, we come to uh, Article 106 of the Constitution. Article 106 of the Constitution, as we know, has spelled out the procedure, the steps which Parliament must follow before it can validly uh, make law. And again, there are certain types of uh, uh, laws uh, which Parliament cannot make. Uh, for example, uh, retroactive uh, you know, legislation and so on, uh, Parliament cannot uh, make that. And, and again, uh, when it comes to uh, taxation, right, despite the fact that Parliament has the power to make laws, uh, unless the government of the day is sponsoring a bill uh, which seeks to uh, impose financial burden on Ghana, on the consolidated fund or the contingency fund or any other fund, it is the government of the day which will have to sponsor the bill. Parliament having the lawmaking power cannot on its own uh, just initiate such a bill. And that is another important uh, limitation on the power of parliament to make a law. So that way, it is not true that parliament in Ghana is supreme like a parliament in Britain. Because the parliament in Ghana is subject to the written constitution. And again, and of course, uh, having the written constitution, you know, uh, the power of judicial review, which is uh, exercised uh, by parliament over all entities, including parliament. As far as compliance with the constitution is what is concerned. And not only that, when it also comes to directive principles of state policy, uh, that contains like the blueprint of the kind of society which we are trying to build, the vision of the ideal Ghana, so to speak. And for that matter, parliament, like any other uh, arm of government, like any other state institution, is supposed to discharge its mandate in a way which will advance the directive principles of what state policy. So all these things are examples which help us to uh, appreciate that it is not true that parliament in Ghana is supreme uh, compared uh, to uh, parliament in the United uh, Kingdom. But as I said, our constitution is rather supreme and Parliament must uh, submit itself to the dictates and authority of the Constitution. And even when it comes to uh, you know, legislation, which is meant to change the Constitution itself, if you look at Article 289 of the Constitution, you notice that it circumscribes how Parliament can exercise its uh, you know, lawmaking powers with respect to changing the Constitution. And sometimes it may even have to uh, you know, hold a referendum and so on before it can uh, progress with 
making certain types of laws which seek to change an aspect of the constitution. So therefore, in conclusion, the point could be made that uh, law 10 uh, is quite right that uh, the common law has uh, already uh, you know, recognized the supremacy of parliament and that principle is still the case in Britain. However, uh, it is not correct in relation to Ghana for the simple reason that we have a written constitution and our constitution uh, has propounded what we call supremacy of the constitution. And for that matter, all actions of various arms of government, including parliament, are supposed to be in conformity to the letter and the spirit of the constitution. So the answer is certainly uh, no. The observation by Lord Stern is not applicable to Ghana. Yeah, so we will continue our discussion uh, tomorrow uh, morning.